All right, let's use some science. I've got some various devices here. I've got a sound level meter that is DBC scale rated. I'm at the ACU approved static noise test. We're at 50 centimeters. There you go, measured with the tape measure at a 45 degree angle from the pipe. Um, let me begin some screen recording on this one so we can test it. Okay, and we're gonna reset that one. Okay, so first test is, oh, let's put this one on max as well, maximum. Okay, now we're going to do 5,000 RPM and we are going to hold it at 5,000 RPM. This is the static test approved by ACU. We've reset. So we can see what we're already at, just on idle there. DBC is showing 98. We're showing around 84, 85 on that. on there on the phone and we've got the max on there 109 all right all right now we're going to try the FIM 2 meter test so I've still got the uh, MIV can on there and we're going to do the 2 meter max test which is 2 meters 45 degrees we're on soft ground as specified by ACU or FIM to stop the stop any extra reverbs and uh, what we're going to do is we are going to run this max throttle for one second and then we'll see what kind of um, readings we get. We're in neutral, good, let's go. Okay, let it idle, let it circulate a little bit of oil. Ready, steady, three, two, one. <laughs> Oh, 106.3 at two meters. Okay, let's switch over the cans and see what difference it makes then. Okay, now we're here, we're still at two meters. Stock exhaust is back on, so we're gonna do the FIM two meter max test. At two meters up to full throttle, here we go. Still up to temperature, it was just a really quick exhaust change. Okay, are we ready? Three, two, one. All right, let's go and have a look at some results. So we're at 106.1. And hopefully we've got that on the screen recording there. And we've got it all recorded. Okay. Let's now move the bike over and do the 50 centimeter static test. Okay, we are now at 50 centimeters. We're gonna try the uh, static noise test now. So we're gonna start it, rev it up to about 5,000 RPM and we're gonna hold it there. Okay. and 4.8 there we go be interested to see the uh, screenshot of that all right i got no idea what that conclusion is and i've got no idea what that tells us at all but hopefully when i look through all the look back through all the footage i can put some numbers up on the screen and we can try and get some scientific data to prove the volume even though we're not measuring the exact frequencies um, objectively 
maybe there's not a huge amount in the sound but subjectively that little MIV titanium pipe uh, is a heck of a lot louder to the human ear and just the feeling that it gives so I hope that helps anyway okay let's try and draw some conclusion that's actually beneficial here um, the MIV slip-on is louder than the stock uh, pipe and probably louder than most people would expect probably the the most important conclusion is you can't measure your exhaust pipe with a phone because I looked for all these decibel meter apps and they all measure in decibel A scale not in decibel C scale and if you try and search anywhere any of the official testing procedures they seem to be all uh, focus towards the decibel C scale rating because they're more interested in the deeper notes and the the lower frequencies, the you know the bassier part of the sound. So uh, just running through the ACU requirements a little bit of those two tests, you can find it on their website acu.org.uk, and it's called the Sound Level Control Test. So. Um, it says from 2019, two sound test methods will be employed: the existing existing static RPM test and the FIM two meter max test. Both tests are internationally approved. So the the static test method was exactly as you saw me do it. The um, the meter the microphone needs to be placed 500 millimeters 50 centimeters from the exhaust pipe end at an angle of 45 degrees measured from the exhaust center line as near as possible to the height of the exhaust end which is at least 20 centimeters above the ground as you can see i got that one pretty much spot on uh, good height everything for that that bench was very lucky need to keep it running until you reach the specified rpm in my case it seems that the specified rpm is about 5000 rpm so um, then moving on to the two meter max method um, which doesn't seem quite as common but there's obviously some places out there that are using it measuring it in a similar sort of way it did say to mount mount the microphone a little bit higher but i didn't have a tripod with me for the microphone so i may do we're two meters behind the motorcycle angle of 45 degrees rev it to maximum for one second or up to the rev limiter which my bike was very responsive and so within a second it was up at the rev limiter anyway so those were the two test procedures that i performed and surprisingly the difference is bigger than I expected. So the stock one on the static noise test came in at 104.8, which is actually quite high and higher than I expected as well. On the bike itself and on the owner's manual, it does specify 99 decibels at 5,000 RPM. This doesn't really uh, state exactly which method they're using. This could be some Japanese motorbike standard rather than EU or UK standard. But interestingly, the the rating is 99 decibels on the A scale. They're not including the C scale, which everyone seems to be moving towards. Uh, another thing to note quickly uh, while I'm rabbiting on is the decibel meter that I was using, although it was a, a cheap one that you can pick up that's not very costly, uh, I've had it for years and I have compared it against some high-end calibrated um, sound level meters a couple of times and within the last year actually I had I compared this one directly to the Test Valley Council environmental health guy he has a really expensive calibrated microphone for environmental health noise complaints and stuff and I compared mine against his and it was within half a decibel um, when we compared those two meters so I'm, I'm confident in the calibration anyway so where the stock one at 5000 rpm was showing 104.8 as the peak um, the MIV was showing 109.3 decibels as the peak so it's a 4.5 decibel uh, increase a 4.5 decibel increase but importantly the decibel scale is not a linear scale it's a logarithmic scale now moving on to the max test this one i found a lot more interesting the peak figures that we've recorded on the decibel c scale 
are 106.1 for the stock exhaust and 106.3 for the MIV. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that may be. Um, I would need someone who is a lot more experienced with acoustics to help me understand why on the 5000 RPM uh, it, there's a 4.5 decibel difference between the two but then when we go on to the max test there's only a 0.2 uh, decibel difference now is that just the fact of uh, the 5000 rpm it's lower in the range so it's a deeper bassier note um, and the microphone is only 50 centimeters away whereas on the max test it's two meters away I'm not exactly sure what that that shows and what that means, um, but definitely translating into my experience of riding on the road, the MIV is a lot louder at idle and at low throttle and round town and those slow to mid-range cruising speeds. As you open it up, I don't think the, the MIV screams as crazy um, as you might expect so maybe that kind of translates into those findings um, what else did we learn adding a slip on can increase the volume uh, that is clear it's good to have some actual data to some actual evidence to kind of support that rather than just uh, I think this or I feel this or you know, we can be tricked by our own ears, especially when we spent 100, 200, 300 pounds on exhaust boxes or, you know, some people spend a lot more than that. Then psychologically, your brain wants to think a certain thing, wants to be justified. And, you know, you you can trick yourself, your ears and your brain can trick itself. So um, it's good to see actual scientific data this is not in a lab. This is not under, you know, strict controlled, uh, you know, controlled environment testing. But I tried to make it as fair as I possibly could, give a good baseline. What you didn't see in the video was I did take, I did two to three goes at every test. So there were two to three uh, tests of the static test with both exhaust and with the peak max or on both of them the results were extremely consistent actually i was expecting a much wider uh, variance between all of the results but i was really impressed actually how consistent all of the results were the testing on the mobile phone with the mobile phone app and the decibel a rating and reading didn't really show us much it didn't really mean much at all but the decibel c meter um, very helpful and um, it'll be interesting to see how things get implemented as we go forward also worth bearing in mind that these figures were on grass and as we spoke about earlier the area of grass is like diffusing the sound waves around the the motorbike and around the exhaust so if you'd have done the same test on solid concrete the figures would have been higher all round but especially the gap might have been even further away because the bass notes are the ones that are going to resonate and are going to reverberate and bounce against the concrete and be reinforced and be even louder. So um, I hope all of this rambling helps you and I hope this testing actually means something to you. And um, you'll see me again on the next one, whatever crazy idea that may be.